Welcome to our introduction to Tier 4 for Sunbelt customers and equipment operators. Although we have all heard about Tier 4, most of us only have bits and pieces of the whole picture. Our goal at Sunbelt is to ensure that you have the right information to effectively deal with the new Tier 4 technologies and requirements. First, we'll take a very brief look at some of the reasons why our industry is on this Tier 4 path to begin with. Next, we will check out some of the different technologies that our engine manufacturers are using to meet emission standards. And finally, we will take a look at how Tier 4 impacts you and what you need to know to have a trouble-free experience with Tier 4 equipment. So, what's the reason for all the changes that Tier 4 is bringing to our industry? This can be answered in two words. Clean air. One of the worst pollutants coming out of diesel exhaust is known as particulate matter, or PM. The other major culprit coming out of exhaust pipes is nitrogen oxides, or NOx, which is the main cause of smog. Tier 4 regulations are designed to significantly reduce PM and NOx, clean up the air we breathe, and most importantly, improve the health of our nation's citizens. Without going into any great detail, let's take a quick look at the various components our engine manufacturers are using to meet the new emission standards. It is important to keep in mind that manufacturers often use different combinations of these components. High pressure common rail fuel injection has been an essential factor from early tier stages and can employ pressures exceeding 25,000 psi. Cooled exhaust gas recirculation systems, often referred to as EGR systems, have also been used to a certain degree in meeting emission standards during the earlier tier stages. Variable geometry turbochargers, or VGTs, are used to deliver the precise amounts of compressed fresh air for both the combustion process and certain after-treatment components. The diesel oxidation catalyst, also known as a DOC, works much like the catalytic converters on cars and needs very little maintenance. Many configurations use selective catalytic reduction, or SCR. When injected with the right amount of diesel exhaust fluid, known as DEF, the SCR chamber does a great job of eliminating nitrogen oxides. And finally, to reduce particulate matter, manufacturers often use a diesel particulate filter, or DPF. To keep this unit from clogging up, the system has to use high temperatures to periodically burn off the built-up soot. This process is known as regeneration. A few simple items within five areas are really all that you need to be familiar with when renting or operating equipment with the new Tier 4 technologies. These five areas are Required fluids High pressure fuel systems Idling and low engine loads DEF requirements and finally, DPF procedures. Let's take a closer look at each of these areas. Strict requirements for engine oil and diesel fuel apply to all Tier 4 engines. When adding engine oil, look for the rating of CJ4 on the container. Using this newer formulation will help you avoid major engine problems and downtime. Most diesel fuel used today is ultra-low sulfur diesel, but double check with your supplier to make sure you're getting the right thing. Introducing any other fuel into a Tier 4 engine is a violation of the law. Due to precision tolerances designed into Tier 4 engines, extreme cleanliness is required for both engine oil and diesel fuel. Make sure your storage and transfer tanks are clean, as well as your dispensing equipment. High-pressure common rail fuel systems are found on most modern diesel engines and are used with all Tier 4 engines. These fuel systems use extremely high pressures that often exceed 25,000 psi, enough to cause very serious and permanent injuries. Equipment operators need to understand these dangers and be advised not to follow the old practice of bleeding fuel systems by cracking the lines open. Basically, do not attempt to perform any fuel system maintenance. Although running an engine for extended periods at idle or under low loads has always led to the buildup of excess soot, the new Tier 4 components are especially vulnerable to this problem. Extended idling times and long low-load applications are major causes of premature EGR and DPF clogging, leading to component failure and equipment downtime. For many obvious reasons, it's always a good idea to turn off the equipment when it's not in active use. Diesel Exhaust Fluid, or DEF, is required for engines that use selective catalytic reduction systems. Not all Tier 4 engines use SCR systems. You can tell if a machine requires DEF, 
by looking for an extra tank, which always has a blue fill cap and is usually mounted near the fuel tank. We cannot overemphasize the need to use only fresh, high-quality, clean DEF. For this reason, we recommend that you consider purchasing DEF from your Sunbelt Rental store. Here are a few things you need to know about storing DEF. DEF begins to degrade after one year and should not be used. Always store DEF in the original container in a cool location and out of direct sunlight. DEF should not be stored at temperatures below 12 degrees Fahrenheit or for more than six months at temperatures above 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Equipment operators should keep an eye on DEF levels by monitoring the dash DEF indicators. On some systems, when the DEF level gets too low, it will cause a no restart situation until the DEF tank is refilled. It is extremely important to make sure that the only thing that goes into the DEF tank, as indicated by the blue fill cap, is pure clean DEF. In some machines, diluting DEF or filling the tank with any other fluid will be detected by sensors and result in the engine shutting down, requiring a service call. Now, let's take a look at what you need to know about diesel particulate filters. Just like SCR systems, not all Tier 4 machines use DPFs. The best way to determine if a machine has a DPF is to check the control panel for a DPF regeneration switch. When a DPF begins to accumulate too much soot, the system injects a controlled amount of diesel fuel into the DPF to superheat the unit and burn off the soot. This process is known as regeneration. There are two types of regeneration. One is auto-regeneration, sometimes referred to as passive, and the other is parked regeneration, sometimes referred to as active. Auto-regeneration occurs while the machine is in operation and should not normally be bypassed or terminated early. The typical selection switch is configured to have auto-regeneration normally on. Parked regeneration occurs when the soot level is too high for auto-regeneration to handle. The operator is advised by a dash warning indicator that parked regeneration is needed and will need to manually initiate the regeneration. The parked regeneration generally takes about 45 minutes to complete, and the machine must be running but parked and out of service. It is important to understand the DPF dash indicator lights and symbols, which can vary between manufacturers. The dash indicators pictured here are fairly typical. No matter which type of regeneration is taking place, you should never shut the engine off until the process has completed, as shown by the dash indicator. Operators need to know that bypassing regenerations or ignoring regeneration requests can lead to early failures and machine shutdowns. Regeneration activity is recorded and stored to help everyone reduce lost time and expenses. As our industry does its part to help everyone breathe cleaner air, we fully expect there will be a few questions along the way. Your local Sunbelt service team is fully prepared to help you with any questions or issues that may come up.